Now let's take a look at the types of clouds, where they are in the atmosphere and what they might mean. Let's check out this graphic and we'll go over it. Now cloud types are assigned to categories, generally based on the height above ground level. The low clouds extend from near the ground to approximately 6,500 feet. The middle, what we call mid clouds, middle clouds, from about 6,500 feet to near 20,000 feet above ground level. High clouds are generally above 20,000 feet and are generally made up of ice crystals. The thunderstorm is an exception. It covers, it covers everything. It can exist from near ground level to sometimes over 50,000 feet. Clouds are arranged based on a little bit of vertical development. We call it cumuliform. Vertical development, stratus, which is stable, kind of flat and milky. And uh, take a look at some of these or expand on them just a little bit. Of course, the thunderstorm is over on your right and uh, it goes, uh, starts as a little towering queue and then goes up eventually into a big thunderstorm. The top of the anvil up there is made out of ice crystals. Now down at the bottom left, you'll see stratus. It's low, it's kind of flat. Now sometimes when it rains a lot in the winter time, right above that's called nimbostratus. No lightning, no thunder, just heavy rain. But once the stratus moves along, you see stratocumulus along the bottom there, it gets a little bit of vertical development because it's not only stratus, now it's stratocumulus. And then when it's going up a little higher, we call it cumulus. Then we finally end up with towering cumulus and cumulus congestus and storms going up. But we go all the way up and we get uh, the alto cumulus. It's a cumulus cloud, yep, you know, above uh, 6,500 feet. And the alto stratus, so you have cumulus clouds in the mid-levels and you have stratus clouds in the mid-level. And the alto stratus, you can kind of, it's kind of dim and hazy through the sun. And then we get all the way up we get cirrocumulus and cirrostratus, and let me tell you, if you've looked out on a stormy day, there are just all kinds of clouds, and it seems like they're going every which way. Fairly often on a severe weather day, small, low-level, ragged stratus move across the sky from the south, moving to the north. They may move other directions, but generally the ones coming to the south, moving north, represent moisture moving into your area. And to have a thunderstorm, you have to have moisture. Now here we see stratus, now it's no longer stratus, but stratus that has become a stratocumulus. There's some vertical development going on. And this is where the vertical development's increasing. The sun is hitting uh, the earth, the earth is hitting the atmosphere. And there are updrafts in there, but they're just not strong enough to go all the way up to cause it to become a thunderstorm. But at work, we call these wannabe thunderstorms. And these are towering Q. Those would be feeding into a big thunderstorm on the far right. But you see on the lower left, a little short, squatty towering Q going up, updraft there. And then the next one in the middle, it's a stronger updraft that's going up. All these will eventually become a thunderstorm or a part of a huge thunderstorm. So we've gone from stratus to stratocumulus to towering cumulus now. And this would be cumulus congestus, the stage right before it becomes a thunderstorm. And cumulus congestion just means a lot of stuff is gathered together. At this point, the storm is all updrafts. And then the thunderstorm forms. And uh, it becomes mainly updrafts, but at this point, we might start getting some downdrafts. So a thunderstorm has updrafts, it has downdrafts, and once it becomes all downdrafts, it goes away. But here we see this big thunderstorm that is formed. That area at the top, that's the anvil. We're looking at the back of it. That's a back sheared anvil because it built into the wind, the upper level winds. But most of that is made up out of ice. Now this is a thunderstorm from space. There's the big anvil. And in, in under it, you can see towering Q and cumulus congestus and cumulus and stratus. But the big pancake anvil and then right on the right hand side back there, it kind of bubbles up. That indicates a very severe thunderstorm when it goes up through that anvil area and bubbles on up. And uh, it's quite fascinating to watch these. You can learn so much from them from the satellite photographs. It's great to always check these out. Now with time and the heating of the atmosphere, once again, the low clouds grow. They become larger, become towering cumulus and with significant vertical extent. And the more time the cumulus cloud has to develop, the larger it may become if the conditions are right. Eventually, it just grows into a cumulonimbus, which is a thunderstorm. And really, then you call it a thunderstorm because there's lightning. Lightning causes thunder. Uh, if it doesn't have any thunder, it's really not a thunderstorm. Let's take a look at this video. This is Nature in Action.
These stages of storm development are brought to you courtesy of the horizontal wind. Remember the pressure gradient wind? Well, it's part of it. But that uh, wind brings in the horizontal wind from the Gulf of Mexico and brings in the moisture. You can feel it in the morning. You see the stratus going by. Keep that in mind. Now, here we have the moisture coming up in the Gulf of Mexico, and we have the updraft there in the middle, uh, indicated by the red arrows. And it's cooler around that updraft than it is in the updraft. Actually, the updraft is warmer. So as the air cools and condenses, it releases heat. So in that updraft, it releases energy. As long as that area is warmer than the cooler air around it, that updraft will continue to go up and usually increase in speed. So it's warmer in the middle than it is around. But you have to keep in mind up there about, oh, sometimes 12,000 feet, uh, even though we're saying warmer, and there's what we call supercooled water. There's a, there's a huge area in a thunderstorm that has liquid water, but that is below freezing. So it's a fascinating, fascinating business. In reality, many other factors come into play when producing a severe thunderstorm, but this simple brief explanation suffices for the moment.